All right, so today I'm joined by the co-founder of Hoxo Media, Sean Anderson, a good friend of mine. He helps recruitment agencies actually build their businesses via LinkedIn through branding and LinkedIn content. And he's also the host of the RAG podcast, which has got over 25,000 monthly listeners and has 32,000 followers on the LinkedIn platform. And Sean also runs a dedicated academy teaching firms how to actually use LinkedIn and build their businesses via LinkedIn. And Sean, I'd say you're probably the biggest authority on on LinkedIn that I personally know, which is why I wanted to invite you on and chat with us today. And we're gonna actually talk about what's working right now, how to really build a brand and build authority on LinkedIn. And uh, Sean has got a lot going on, so we're gonna try and keep this brief, but as valuable as possible. So Sean, I wanna hand it over to you so we can get stuck right into this. What would you say that is some of the things that you're doing on a weekly basis on LinkedIn to help you with driving your own business forward? Um, what are the things I'm doing? I think, firstly, thanks for having me on, mate. I appreciate it and for the nice intro. Um, the uh, Everything that I do is what I teach. So I live and breathe what I actually teach and I, I'm a practitioner. I'm, I don't come from a marketing background. I don't. I used to be working recruitment, so I used to do the job that my clients do. Um, and I did, I did everything they do now which is what I call an offline recruiter. Someone who has a LinkedIn account open, someone who spends a lot of time looking on LinkedIn. You think about recruitment, which is the industry I serve, they're, they're the whole business, 90% of the industry is on it. They spend all day on it. Like it's open all day. So they use it, but they don't add any value on it. They don't understand that actually all the value they have lives offline. So the con when I say offline, I just mean phone calls, meetings, Zoom calls, face-to-face so they have a one-on-one, -on -one, like me and you now are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But the fact that this is streamed and, uh, and available open on the, on the online domain becomes an online conversation. And that's the bit. So what I try and do is make sure that my presence on LinkedIn is a clear reflection of what I'm saying offline. So I don't limit myself to the offline conversation. So if you, you know, the average recruiter has five, maybe I mean, about five calls a day, maybe 10 at a push. So if you think about that, that's at the top end, that's 50 a week. That's, if you don't have a week off, really, it's two and a half thousand calls a year. And it's actually to the same 500 people on average. It's never like two and a half thousand new people. It's like you're always going around. So you're never really breaking out of that 500 work per, per person world. Whereas on LinkedIn, you can get a thousand views on a post pretty comfortably without any real following. So it's the scale of LinkedIn is insane. So it's three things. I look at growing my network, engaging with my network. So it's how I build and engage that. Then it's my content and it's being authentic and consistent. And then it's follow up. So it's understanding where to look on the platform to drive opportunity from us because it will always still deals are still done offline they're still done on the phone and in meetings they're not you don't do deals on LinkedIn it's not like people just see you and buy your services mm -hmm. unless you've got some kind of e-com e-com product a, a or a link ticket. to buy something that's pretty low ticket yeah. which is not what you yeah and, and people but I don't do that so it's for me it's always still trying to drive that strategy conversation that consultative conversation for no longer really for me it's for my team but it's still the same principle and so like you're talking about merging the two worlds your offline world and the online world and trying to recreate what you'd normally do offline in the online yeah. space on linkedin what does that look like is it is it the content that you're producing and is it a specific type of content is it certain actions that you're taking online like what are you doing on linkedin yeah so i i break down my content into kind of like three pillars so i look at stuff that's non-business related i kind of i kind of struck it on a call right so if i look at a call mm. with someone that i'm trying to convince to work with me there's three things i'm going to do i'm going to try and build rapport so the first five minutes of a call or a meeting i'm always probably trying to find something that we have in common mm. um and and so my content is a, a it's only a small less than 30 percent of my content will be about building rapport at scale so like i talk about the fact that i'm a big man city fan and that mm -hmm. you know i'm having i'm having a my own child I'm, I'm a stepfather i talk about these things that are quite vulnerable at times but and some of them are really high level like i'll share books or podcasts or that i just listen to apologies if i swear i'll try not to try to keep that to a minimum cool. um but basically non-work related rapport building content stuff that and you'd be surprised if you actually look at linkedin now your feed is full of it people love it people engage with it so mm. it doesn't all connection based work, content like, is what i call it that, that connection based yeah. content right it's not value yeah. it's not sales based it's just about no, you no, type it's... content yeah yeah exactly that and then you've got the i call it valuable and credible which is the business related stuff so if you look at the call <laughs> you're then probably going to have a knowledge share 
you're probably going to give some free information away on a call. You're going to say, look, I think you should probably look at this. Have you thought about this? And then you're going to look at, you're going to have to explain your track record to someone. Like you have to show credibility. So you'd be like, look, I've actually already worked with someone like you. Very similar situation. Here's a profile. You know, recruiters all day will say, Mr. Client, I'm already working with your biggest competitor. Like we've just placed 15 people into X, Y, and Z company that are doing exactly what you're doing. You know, we you should be working with us. Or candidates, they'll be like, you know, I've already found five program managers roles in these exact who were in the exact shoes you're in in the last three months. So I'm the right, the right recruiter for you. And again, I know your audience are PTs, right? Online PTs. So same thing, you know, I'm already working with, you know, women looking to lose baby weight or whatever the bloody niche is, yeah. you know. So so ex- the business stuff should be based, are based on two things. It's free value and then it's showing credibility, which is more of your sales content. That's your conversion content, you know, because when you show, you know, I look, I watch your stuff and, you know, you should, Show a lot of the wins that you, you have. And to me, that's credibility all the time. Whether I want to work with you today or not, I'm, 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 you're slowly showing me you're good. And even if I, you know, even if I don't engage on that stuff, because I, I think the, the, the challenge with credible stuff is people don't naturally engage on it as much as, say, the personal Bang on. or the vulnerable stuff. Bang yeah. on, bang but, on. But, but it still drives, but that's the stuff that actually yeah. people, people are like, watching. Yes. So, people are watching. Yeah. So I get people, I get people that first notice me because of my French Bulldog or because I'm a Man City fan. Henry. And then they, then they learn, then they learn, a, and then they learn loads of from me for months because I'm always giving it away. And then it might be that one day I'll post about that guy who's just made a million on li- from his LinkedIn account in the last 12 months from working with me. And they'll go, it's, I've got to find out if I should work with this guy. And so it's it's not a complete linear line that happens overnight, but it three things: show your personality, show your knowledge, and show your rec- you're good at what you do. I, I just don't see how that you can call it what you want, name it all different names, but it's always the same three things. I believe that you know build strong brands on online, and that's LinkedIn, that's Instagram. It's all the same. It's exactly what we do inside of our academy, right? It's connection-based content, value-based content, and vision-based content, which is exactly what you described, right? You've got to have yeah. all three ingredients in there in order to convert, right? If you have one without yeah. the other, it doesn't work in the same way or is not as effective. So I love that you touched on that. You know, you grew your audience to, what is it right now? 32 thousand plus followers. thousand followers. Um, that's not something that happens overnight but how did you go about getting to that level like what were some of the things that you did to to build that size of an audience on linkedin stayed super consistent right i think there's there's a few things like you get connections you can you can i mean there didn't used to be a hundred connections a week limit so 2016 17 when i really went for it like i was connecting to like hundreds a day and you could just go in ham (laughs) <laughs> yeah so i think there's a there was i was pretty lucky the time i went for it i think i was i was on it a bit earlier than a lot of people and now mm-hmm. linkedin have but they, they only introduced followers a couple of years ago and the reason they did that was to copy the likes of insta and twitter and now tiktok and and facebook and now remove, as well and, yeah and remove the need to be a friend or a connection right so yeah. connections limit at thirty thousand. followers are infinite now think about it why would anyone follow you they're going to follow you for two reasons one they're a salesperson and it's their way of getting on your radar it's cool but the main reason is they like what you're talking about like you're producing value so linkedin were very smart they realized that actually as a platform it was very transactional it was like connect someone dm them try and do business all all over the platform but there was no it wasn't a social network like instagram and network facebook and that and they wanted to build a a professional but social network so by creating followers and limiting connections they've they've forced people now to be more creative and try and all these content creators are coming to the platform and what they've also done is given free reach out like you can't get free reach on instagram and facebook like you can on tiktok or or LinkedIn, right? You can post on LinkedIn and get thousands of views. Like my mate's just gone on, he's just launched a business selling, uh, helping people go alcohol free. You know, when he was in his recruitment job, he was getting a thousand views average on a post. Now he's getting 11,000, 12,000 views average because he's just appealing to people at a deeper level. And LinkedIn are just throwing it out without spending any more money or any more time. So LinkedIn, you know, how I've done it is three things. Consistently connecting with people and engaging with them. But then the more content I've produced, the more people connect with me and the more people follow me. It's just, it's just that. So it's like a two, two-pronged attack. Connect, 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 connect. But the more value you add, the more people then start. So I, you know, I probably over fifty percent of my connections have connected to me or followed me, not the other way around. You know, it'd be very hard to get to thirty thousand just going at it yourself. You need to swing it back. And people who don't produce, who don't talk, who don't step out of the comfort zone, they're always relying. Everything's on uh, is an outbound activity, which is tiring and demoralizing and difficult. <laughs> what about these tools, Sean? Walexy, LinkedIn Helper. Have you got any opinions on those automation tools that you can just stick on your account and let it run in the background? 
I don't I don't like them. I think they're amazing for efficiency and time, but I know people who get blocked. Like I spend all day on LinkedIn and I think the amount of people that get blocked for using them uh, is way more than you think. And it depends on, like maybe in your world, it's not as vital. If you're not making much money from LinkedIn and you want to grow it for a fast, I believe Dripify is the one right now that I'm, is getting the best results some people are using to trial it. But for me, at the level I'm at, the thought, if I lost my LinkedIn account tomorrow because I used an automation tool, like that's my, my livelihood is so connected to it. So I think it depends on your appetite of risk and how much you worry about like what's the downside of losing. Because I know a guy, I'm not going to name him. He's got over 60,000 followers in recruitment market. He's one of the, he is literally the authority of global recruitment and he's disappeared on LinkedIn in the last couple of weeks. I'm convinced he's been banned. I'm convinced huh. he, you can't find him. I'm convinced he's been banned for something. And I'm like, the impact on him for that will be massive if he, if that's happened to try and build it back it'll do all right but that's like it takes time though investment. yeah it takes time to build to that level so, but i like what you said it's very practical like you wouldn't at this stage because it's so high risk given you've got a yeah. great account anyway but if someone's listening to this and they're starting from zero 100 connections and you want to take a risk and grow it quickly like worst case scenario you're not going to lose out much because your whole business isn't predicated on the success yeah. of your and if you, if you get to 2000 and you get blocked and you're like well I'll just, i can just build that back up on a different just create a new email yeah. address and go yeah. it's not you know i think it really depends on where you are and how like if your world is not linkedin but Dripify is the one. That's the one that I, I would recommend just from the amount of people I know who use it and tell me how good it's been. Okay, cool. That's great advice because I get a lot of people asking me about this app and this app and this app. And like I'm in, in the middle, you know, like I know it's risk and I know there's probably some consequences of using those things that we're not even aware of. Maybe that's organic reach. Maybe it's flagging the account, even though it's not blocking it. And so it could be punishing yeah, 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 you in yeah. different ways. You know what I mean? These, these tools and social media platforms just don't like automation full stop they just do not like it so good to get your perspective on that um you've got the linkedin premium options right so you've got the linkedin premium accounts where you can actually see analytics you can see this view in your, view in your profile is that something that you use or suggest using you have to have you have to, have you have to. to. Yeah, the free linkedin is a waste of time like you can't see anything like i can you know i i, I have sales navigator which is a slightly more expensive version of premium and it's more business development focused. There's premium sales now and then on the recruiter side, there's, there's tools for recruiters specifically because that's, you know, recruitment is the kind of home of LinkedIn, finding jobs, right? It's where it started from. So, and they are expensive. Like you can be spending five grand a year on a recruiter license. Like it's expensive. Um, but you can then effectively like inmail anyone on the platform and you've got access to people that are saying they're looking for work and things like there's a lot of things you get for it. But the premium is the minimum expectation. If you genuinely want to build on LinkedIn, you need a premium because without that, you can't see certain things. Like for example, if I look at your profile today with premium, you can see it. Now the intent based activity of someone taking the time to look on your profile when there's 900 million users on the platform, that is not something to ignore. Like if, if Instagram showed you that or Facebook showed you that, you, you know, you, you'd use it. LinkedIn shows you that data. It gives you a list of people every single day that have taken the time to look you up. I mean, that is gold. That is literally like liquid gold. And it's what, 50 quid a month to get that? Like, you've got to pay for it. Like that's the Yeah, there's a free trial account. usually as well. If you've never used it, I think there's yeah. like a 30 day free, free trial just to use it and use that that specific tool that you mentioned about that visibility tool. Who's looking? Is that someone yeah. that I can then inbox and see, hey, do you need any help yeah. with X, Y, and Z based on the fact that you checked out my profile? What's the, yeah. the main benefit then from premium to sales nav? You mentioned obviously in mails and stuff. I know you can send messages to people that you're not even connected with but are you actively using yeah, that? yeah not as much as i probably should anymore but yeah this sales navigator is like b2b sales so if you're trying to like you can do searches on companies based on company size and revenue and growth and things like that and you can get decision makers broken down really well so it gives you more of like an, uh, a detailed look at an organization that you're trying to penetrate i think if you're going b2c just use premium like it is just use premium no benefits yeah. yeah yeah okay got it well i appreciate we've been going for about 50 minutes i know you've got a That's lot right. going on. i've got a bit of time i've got to do another 10 and then I'll awesome go awesome well let's keep going then because i'd love to ask you a few more things are you seeing any changes on the platform and things that people should be aware about in the last six or 12 months that weren't things to be aware of pr prior to that is that is there been changes that people need to look at and maybe leverage or is it the same um, is it there's nothing really changed uh, I, no there's definitely some subtle changes i think the most obvious Obvious changes there's just more people like the fact you're having this conversation and i'm always having this conversation there's just more and more and more people taking linkedin as an option so there's still a small
small percentage. It's actually a tiny percentage of LinkedIn users that actually post. I think it's 0.25%, right? So of all the 900 million members, only 25% of them actually go to LinkedIn once a month. And only 1% of that 25% actually writes anything on the platform. So 0.25% of all LinkedIn users contribute to the community, right? Which is tiny. Tiny, but it's still a load of people and that it's growing every single day so impressions the ability to get free reach is getting less and is getting harder with the more competition on there so i remember 2017 i could literally post a video walking down the street talking about anything and i would get a quarter of a million eyeballs on i remember it. you doing this yeah i remember you and doing I loved this it. And it was and yeah. I just was like, this is bonkers. No one's doing it. And it was great. Now you wouldn't get more than 20,000 on something like that. So, you, you know, it's, it's just getting harder, but it's still an amazing opportunity. Let me dive in on that because I remember when I started my business five years ago, you were ahead of me doing stuff on social. And I looked at you and I'm like, why is he doing that? Sean's always on social. Sean's always videoing himself. Sean's always like documenting everything. And because I wasn't at that stage in business, I didn't get it. Like why you were doing it, why you were getting on camera, why you were talking to your phone all the time from from an outsider's perspective and so i know there's going to be people listening to this and not really grasping the the importance of putting yourself out there and on the platform so like if we rewind to when you were doing that and i wasn't doing that what would you say to me to encourage me to do it because you knew it'd benefit my business well again it's it's understanding the why is what's the reason for it it's like some people think it's just a really ego driven activity like they just they're frightened of it they think i'm just a self-obsessed person and that's that's always going to be what some people think and that's okay the reality is if you are trying to build your business and you're wanting to make money from outbound you're trying to do business development whatever format that requires attention right you that's all it is you need the attention of someone even if you're phoning someone if they if they answer the phone you've got their attention it might only be for 30 seconds to tell you to bugger off but you've got their attention right and i worked out having worked in sales for 10 years prior to starting my business that my attention was always directly related to the, the, the outbound activity so was it, i used to knock on doors right if they answered the door i got their attention if they weren't in i didn't i then went to recruitment where i just rang people all day if they answered the phone i got their attention if they didn't I didn't that, if i sent them a dm on linkedin and they replied, I'd got their attention. If they didn't, I didn't. And I realized, because in 2015, 16, I started listening to podcasts. So what we're doing right now, and it was mainly like US-based guys about worldwide stuff. And I realized I was learning from people that I'd never met. I was building an opinion on them and I was starting to buy things from them. So I bought some courses online and I you know, invested in books and things. Based, and I was like, and I remember there was a guy arriving in London from America that was like, I'm going to do a meetup in a pub in wherever, I think it was Battersea or something. And I couldn't make it, but I was like, I was prepared to like drop what I was doing and travel across London to meet a guy I'd never met just because I'd listened to his podcast. And I was like, like, how has he managed to do that? And I thought, when I start my business in 2017, I want that impact on people. And I want to be able to scale myself because I know I'm, I'm only going to make 10 calls a day or 15 calls. I can't, I can't do more than that. Life's about living as well. I've got... I was in a relationship and I, you know, there's things I was doing that wasn't, I couldn't just spend all day working. So I realized that actually I could do that. And then I did play a bit on LinkedIn and I played a bit on Instagram and I played a bit on Facebook and I kind of had a bit of a sporadic strategy at the beginning. I didn't really get it. And then I, I realized that Instagram wasn't the platform that recruiters were really engaging with me on. It was more just friends and I wasn't getting anything from it. And then I kind of felt that Instagram's reach and engagement was very much based on how people looked. So like abs and beach bodies and bikinis and you know it's it was almost like a sex sales platform and i think it still is a lot of that it kind yeah. of put me off and i and i stopped using it in 2019 and i've never gone back which maybe i'll regret but i didn't whereas linkedin was more about what you knew and and how you communicated it so it, it just became something that I realized if I could grow my LinkedIn connections, that was, I didn't think about followers. I didn't think about anyone coming the other way. I just thought if I grow my connections every day and I talk to them every day about something relevant to me and my business, it's got to help. I didn't have like an amazingly cal calculated strategy, but then really quickly within like the first two weeks of doing it, I got leads. I got people saying, Hey, Sean, love your stuff, by the way. Could we find out more about your services? And I was like, I didn't ring them. I didn't have to do anything other than put that little phone video up or put that little bit of thoughts up on the platform get on with the rest of my day, make all the same calls I was going to make. But my brand was working for me in the background. And actually, there was days where I wasn't even working and I'd get a message or I'd be ill and I'd get a message. I would go on holiday and someone was still watching something I did a week ago. And I was like, this is a, this is a game changer. And then I just got obsessed with it. And, and then I created a podcast, which has gone really well. And I do stuff. I, I, I repurpose a lot on YouTube. I don't really focus on YouTube. LinkedIn is my primary platform. Um, but yeah, like I think, and, and again, it doesn't cost a lot. Like, 
now I'm at a position with my business where, you know, I've got 30 odd employees. We've got 350 customers. I'm coaching 5,000 people globally. I could afford now to look at things like ad budgets and highly produced videos and all these things. But at that point in my life, I had me and a phone, you know, and a basic tripod and a cheap mic and like it was just about getting on with it and actually if i look at all the stuff i've I've invested in that raw authentic content still tends to do the best even now like even if i just pay for some really fancy video to be done i still people still respond really well to a wobbly video of you walking down the road like it's it's got that authenticity to it that people tend to like that's interesting so if everyone's listening to this and they're like, I get it, I get it, I get it. It makes sense. It's going to build my business. It's going to build my brand. It's going to get me uh, leads. It's going to get me people uh, reaching out and asking about my programs, my services, my offers. But I'm just scared, yeah. Sean, to put myself out there. I'm just scared. Like, how do I How do I yeah. start? What do I do? What's step well, one? What was step should probably one talk you? to you. They should probably talk to you, right? Um, that's, what, that's what the main aim is here. I think they, they should talk to someone like you, right? Who understands it from their perspective and works with people like them. But... If they just wanted to go on it alone, my simple bit of advice is to look internal rather than external. So the first thing people do is go, what am I going to write about? What are people going to want to hear about? And they think outwardly and they get they get lost in the sea of, of, of writer's block and it's, it's, it's really scary. Whereas if, if you flip the script and look internal and look at your life right now and what you've been doing and what you were saying on, just look at your last three calls with a client or three meetings or three PT sessions or whatever you're doing. Mm. I think, when was there a time where was able to help them and they thanked me for it because if someone said cheers for that you can guarantee that if one person said it there'll be multiple people would appreciate it and if you can package up that little bit of advice that that person said thanks for and put it on linkedin as a video or as an image or whatever then you guarantee there'll be more people that will say thank you for it and you know if there was that one story you told about your life that people laughed and you interacted and you can you know you had that little bit of connection then Again, there's going to be more people that will connect with it. There's always going to be some people that don't like things, but that's just life. And again, if there was one story that you told about a client that got that last customer to buy from you, where you were like, you're just like Johnny and Johnny did this and I got him here, then there's going to be more people who will buy into that story and will be will, will benefit from reading it. So it's, it's not a forward-facing activity, in fact. It's a reverse of that. It's looking inwards and deep at what you're already doing. Because if you're already saying it and you're already doing it, as long as you carry on doing your day job, you've got an infinite stream of ideas for LinkedIn. But it's knowing how, and that's what I do, as I help people in my world understand themselves and, and access that. Like there is a lot of, there's a lot to it. Most people will, you know, get so far on their own and then they'll want some help and some advice to systemize it and things like that. But if you just want to get going, I'd focus on those, those things. I love that. Because it's not complicated. It's look at what's already happening outside offline in your life in your business in your interactions with clients and then just flip it then into something that you kind of just talk about vocally online it's all it is right it's an experience yep. turned into a piece of content not i need to create create a piece of content it's 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 kind of like what a lot of people say document don't create document what is already happening and turn it into a piece of content that has some form of value or Gary does v. other things Gary V, we went to see him years ago. Do you remember? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got me to start this, this podcast. Not this one, but he's the, the guy. One. He's 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 the one for me that really explained it in a way that like no one else did. That like, yeah, looking at creation is a skill that most people don't have. Mm. But documentation of your own like that's everyone can do it. People are more comfortable with different levels of it. And that's my final bit of advice is don't try and be me or you or someone else. That's not what we're trying to do here. But also, if you're the type of person that, you know, doesn't like sharing something, then try and just push yourself a, sl a little bit out of your comfort zone. But I'm not saying go to like deepest, darkest thoughts and depression and share everything about your life. But if, you, if you're the sort of person who's really reserved, then just dial it up by like one notch. Share something that you wouldn't normally share because you'd be surprised when you come out of your comfort zone, magic happens. Like if you stay in your comfort zone and only do what you've always done, you can predict what's going to probably happen based on past past results.